Good morning, everybody. So I am writing what this is about. So this live um, is all about powders. So if you are interested in why you should use powder, hello, hello, hello. Hi, oh wait, is it Mooney, Mountain Tam? Is that like kind of like a play on Mountain Tam? Hi guys. I don't know if these are your real names, so I'm just gonna say Carrie Liss. I'm think Carrie Liss, like Careless. Oh, I kind of like that. Um, thank you. Uh, I don't know if. I, yeah, I guess I feel pretty today because um, my hair is not frizzy. So yay! Oh, thank you. Um, I work hard on my skin. Yay! Hi. Okay, so um, you guys, I was literally finishing up. I. I get up super early in the morning. I'm usually getting up in the dark because I don't want to wake up my husband. Um, so I usually get up in the dark and I like put my creams on, everything in the dark basically. Sometimes I just use my phone. So then when I get home from like my morning routine, which is making smoothies for my kids, getting my kids ready, doing the dishwasher, all that kind of stuff. If I'm not working, meaning that I'm not like doing active argon stuff, um, I get to be able to do my makeup a little later. Um, I'm not exercising right now because I had a procedure done, which I'm deciding if I want to talk about or not because I don't know. I don't know if um, anyone wants to know. So, but my makeup, I put it on, I was putting it on later putting on my makeup later today. So if you've never seen my Instagram, my name is Morgan Schick. I was a Ford model since 1987, so about 30 years. Um, I became a makeup artist because my skin was being destroyed as being a model. I wasn't a supermodel, so I didn't have a bunch of people like worried about my skin and every skincare person trying to fix me. I had to do it myself, so people felt like, hello, Bella, hello, Amelia. Um, Smoothson, how you guys? Anyway, so hello, Charleston, darling. Oh my gosh, Katie, you guys, P Disney, yay! Oh, yay, 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 hi. Um, anyway, so I was a model. I was a working model. I was not a supermodel. I was on the, in the Sears. I was in Spiegel. I was not a supermodel, but my skin was being destroyed, and I still felt like if you hired me, you shouldn't have to deal with my crazy skin. I became, hi, Kimberly. Um, I became a makeup artist first, um, and then I started uh, doing people's makeup for their photos. I did not want my photos to be retouched in the industry in 1987. That was huge. People would take a photo and then you know retouch it. Now you can do it on your phone, but then it was just like a professional. So all of these other models at Ford wanted me to do their makeup for their composite cards, which is how I really became a makeup artist, even though I never called myself a makeup artist because I didn't want to offend actual makeup artists who were trained in Paris and were artists. And although I worked with all of them, from Laura Mercier to um, some of the most famous in the world, and I learned everything. I was such a sponge. I would like write everything down and ask if I could have the boxes and when I'd go to Paris I'd buy everything that they told me to buy and so I really kind of was self-taught. Um, then I did some TV and I used Laura Mercier's palette when she first started and their company asked me to be the spokesperson. So for three, almost three years I was a spokesperson for Laura Mercier. I did all of her low-end TV. Then they asked me to do my own line, but also HSN and QVC came to me, and I felt like those were the people that needed me. If you could afford Laura Mercier or Trish McAvoy or one of those, then you didn't need me in your home teaching you how to do your makeup. Um, I wanted to be the proponent for the person who couldn't afford a $30 powder. Anyway, so that's how we get to today. I was doing my makeup. Oh, geez, I really can't see without these. I was doing my makeup and I was about ready to think if I needed any powder. And I thought, you know what? I get so many questions about people wondering, why do you wear powder? Or wait, powder is bad? You hate liquid foundation, so why do you hate powder? Because that stays on your skin. So I thought, you know what? While I have a moment, I am going to explain what my issues are with powder and see if um, it resonates for any of you. Um, like somebody like Kimberly is on TV Heavy lights can make everything shine. If you've ever seen me on Evine, and Kimberly will attest to this, I am way shinier than anybody else that's on Evine because I do not love powder. Why? So my entire idea is for our skin to stay moist and hydrated at every level at all times. The reason I don't like a liquid foundation is because it's water, which is what your skin is, the life source of all of us, 
and it's polluted water because it's got color in it, it's got oxides in it, it's got pigments in it, it's got silicone in it, it's got all these other things in it, preservatives, in order for you to be able to use it all the time. When you put it attached to a water, it sinks into your skin, it goes into your pores, um, it can compromise your immune system, we have no idea, um, and it can cause breakouts, right? Because if the water is attached to any type of germ, it's gonna go in straight in, hide and highlight, baby, which is why I invented hide and highlight. So hide and highlight is the purest form of pigments that stays on top of your skin. But in the same vein, one would say, why aren't you just using powder? Because that really stays on top of your skin. And I will tell you, I have every form of powder. I have um, organic powder that is not really powder. This is silica. I have talc powders, which everyone thinks is horrible. And I'm going to explain to you why. And you can decide. You can decide whether you want to use talc, talc powder or not. A hundred years ago, talc was made in asbestos-ridden factories. This is true. So talc did have um, minute amounts of asbestos in it. So 100%, that's not good. Asbestos causes cancer. If you're using talc in your areas or on your face, we don't want it on there. Gotcha. But once they figured it out, talc is no longer made in a, asbestos. It is not a derivative of asbestos. It is literally oxides ground up. But oxides ground up are meant to do what? Mattify and what else? Soak up oil. That's why it mattifies, right? But if I'm soaking up the moisture on my skin, what am I doing? I'm drying out my skin. So, and you understand this if you're on, if you see me on air, I will use powder right here to mitigate a little bit of the shine, but I want my skin to remain moist and dewy. Next level, why would I say to use a loose powder over, this is one of the most famous pressed powders in the world, it's called Banana and it's from Leclerc and it um, has a yellow pigment to it, so it kind of, cuts out some of the redness and the blueness in the skin. This is powder smushed with wax. Now, I always say to you guys, guys, just stain your lips with a lip pen. Avoid the pigment pen with wax. Why? Because wax sits up on top of your skin. It's the same reason why I want you to use loose powder versus a wax powder or a, a, a pressed powder because it's mixed with wax to hold it together. So I am trying half a millimeter by half a millimeter by half a millimeter to keep your skin without layers. That's why I don't do a tinted moisturizer. Don't want it sinking in, then a foundation, then a this, then a that, then a this, then a, no. I want you to have the thinnest amount of product on your skin Hello, to keep your skin beautiful, to deal with where our shadows are, to deal with opening up your eyes, to deal with making your skin calm, to deal with um, helping your skin nourish itself from the inside out, and then not allowing makeup to compromise all of the good work you're doing. So that is my why I, I don't I am not a huge believer in a powder foundation that goes everywhere. Why? Because that powder foundation is sucking up all of the moisture I want to retain on your skin. So I believe, and I invented Hide and Highlight, which is my color, you know, how I brighten up under my eyes, around my mouth, around my nose, and then um, fix any broken capillaries, redness, ruddiness on my skin. And then I don't powder it. I make it so pure that you don't need to powder it. If you want to powder it, I prefer you use either a silica based, and remember, silica is doing the same thing. It's holding the moisture. Even if it's in a hyaluronic acid or even it's whatever they're calling it, it is hold, it is designed to suck moisture up. So let's say you get olive oil on your shirt. What's the, what's the easiest way to get rid of it? Putting powder on it. It soaks up the oil, and then you can wash the shirt. 
It's exactly the same thing with your skin. And you guys, I made my own talc powder. I used a non-asbestos talc factory because talc is the most finely milled. If you want to use, I, I, I'm not making powder now, but when I was on HSN, I had my own whisper set powder. You can use a silica powder. I find that the silica powder looks a little white on the skin because it's really hard to pulverize it in the same way. But if you have this mindset that talc is horrible and you want to use a silica press, I like this R RMS is like one of the, that I thought that was the best. Um, it's the thinnest. I think this, and then there's also one. And guys, I buy all of it. So I have the, this is by Terry. This is also a, a silica powder. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'll, I, I'm gonna show you. So this is the one by Terry. It's a hyaluronic and it's a silica. So it's, it's a little bit more granular. So if I'm using it, it turns a little white. Do you see it just turned white on my skin? I kind of don't want that. So I have a talc asbestos free talc powder so I've got that on that side and you can see this is colorless but talc just basically mattifies right where I want it to mattify but I don't want I don't want you using powder all over your face because it's going to dry out your skin and you're spending and being so diligent about keeping your skin moist and I want you to have that like bouncy moist skin all day long if you powder your skin, so here's another thing. If you powder your skin, your skin is either gonna do two things. Usually, it tells your brain, when it surface dryness happens, it tells your brain to produce more of your own natural moisture. That's your own sebum. So people tell me all the time, well, I have to powder my face because I get so oily. Well, you're creating that cycle. You're creating, you're powdering your face, your skin is drying out. It's telling your brain, throw more sebum out to the surface of the skin because it's dry. It looks oily. You powder again. It throws more off. This was the cycle I lived when I was, you know, in 1987. They, I'd go on a job. They put way too much foundation all over my face. My face would try to throw it off. I'd get oily. They'd powder me down. An hour and a half later, I'd get oily again because my skin's trying to throw off that makeup and it's dehydrated. They'd powder me down again. I'd end up with so much powder on my face that my skin couldn't breathe and I'd get breakouts. Then I'd come home and I'd use Strydec pads and I'd use toners with alcohol and I'd use Sea Breeze and I'd scrub the snot out of my face trying to scrub off the pimples. None of it worked. So now I understand, I'm old, I'm 53, and I have wisdom, and I've tried everything. And I want you guys to benefit from my trials, my errors, and the fact that as a model, no one had my best interest at heart. And it's not that they were bad people, they were doing their jobs. Makeup artists, make Morgan pretty for the day. That's what their job was. It wasn't, ooh, let's wonder about what Morgan's skin is gonna look like when she's 53. They don't think, no one has the, nobody has that opportunity to think that far in advance. So what I'm trying to teach you is that when you are thinking about powder and you think it's easy to just go get a pure pigment powder and brush it all over your face, understand why that might be drying your skin out and making your skin oily. No child is born with combination skin. Everyone is born with the same skin. Yes, hormones are involved. Environment is involved. Is involved. If you live in Arizona, you're gonna have drier skin because the sun and the dry air is sucking out the moisture. If you live in the Caribbean or in Florida, you have more humidity, so your skin is going to stay moister. That's, all of those are variables I'm, I understand. Your, what you eat, your hormones, those are all variables. What I'm trying to help you do is control what you can control. You can control the cycle of too much over-processing on your skin or over-powdering of your skin or liquid foundation sinking into your skin. You can control all of that. I am saying use a pure pigment concealer. It doesn't have to be mine. Trust me, I have an entire bag. Hold on. An entire bag of other people's concealers because I'm always looking for people to be able to find the best product for their money. 
I buy everything. I want to make sure that you guys have the best products that you can possibly have. And I made what I think is not out there. And But you may be like, Morgan, I tried, what is this, Pixie? I tried this Pixie concealer and I absolutely loved it. Awesome. At least I know you're not taking an amazing water and polluting it and then putting it on your skin and your skin's gonna drink it up. And then you're gonna have these large pores when you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s and you're gonna try and get them to shrink. You cannot shrink a pore. A pore has to be cleaned out and then not refilled and it will slowly shrink. It, sh it refills, um, it, it cleans itself out much faster when you're young, when you're old, when you're my age at 53, I barely have cell turnover. So I have to use things that help with cell turnover. Um, I'm actually, I am actually coming out with something that I think is gonna be awesome, but I'm not gonna talk about it here because this is about powders that I don't even own. So Laura Mercier powder, really good. Um, it's talc, but it is not contaminated with asbestos. Um, by Terry is a silica with hyaluronic acid. RMS Beauty is a silica, but it's plain. Um, I think this one might be a little bit thinner. And who else? Um, and I think that's it. Col oh, this one's by Colmar. So there are a lot of different powders out there. This one's Ben Nye. This is also a talc powder, super fine. Um, ben Nye was a very famous makeup artist um, for movies. And then if you're going to use a pressed powder, remember that it's a loose powder attached to wax to keep it pressed. So it's yet another layer. Oh, I also wanna, um, before you guys go, I know this is super long and I'm very sorry. Here's why I like a powder puff for powder over a brush, okay? And I have this amazing, beautiful brush that I guess you could use this instead. This is from, um, Artis, I appreciate your advice, love your products, they are amazing, thank you. Okay, so this is why I use a powder puff. When you take a little powder on a powder puff, especially if it's a velour powder puff, I won't be able to see who's writing, but this, watch how this just presses down my little, my skin, my, my little hairs, whatever. Do you see how smooth it is? If you take a brush and you powder, you're not, getting the ability to just mattify it a little bit, this will lift the skin and lift the hairs. So when you're adding powder, I like even if you use a tissue, to just give it that little bit of a press because not only are you applying the little bit of powder, and I'm talking tiny amounts, but you're also giving that advantage of pressing the skin down and Maybe you're putting it in the pour, but it's really negligible because you're not really using enough powder. So you're almost using this to blot, but you're adding just a tiny bit. This is going to lift skin, so you never get as velvety a feeling with a brush, especially if you go like this. You're literally like lifting up the tiny hairs on your face and lifting up the dry skin or whatever it is, and you're just you're not going to have that velvety quality now. If you're using one of these Artiste brushes, you can have the ability to just kind of smooth it out. But I also think it might be pulling off some of your hide and highlight, so I don't know, it's up to you. Anyway, have an amazing day. Um, if you ever have questions, please DM me on Instagram. I always write everybody back. I'm actually gonna be talking about um, ingredients on Instagram, I think today, because I'm totally, uh, I'm a proponent of organics, but sometimes organics um, don't have enough, should not be, have to be, thank you, have to be kept in the um, refrigerator. And, you know, I've been organic, I've already had immune systems, I care everything about everything I put in my mouth, my children's mouth, my husband's mouth, all of your mouths. Um, but if you are, there are, there are some misconceptions about certain, um, parabens, um, and certain other uh, antibacterials that are in products. And my general rule about it is, it depends on where you're putting it. 
If you're putting something around your eyes, I want it to have a, a small amount of preservative in it because that is an orifice that if you have bacteria, you could go blind. So my beauty is not worth going blind and for you either. So there are some things that I say absolutely do not, should not have any even preservatives in it or parabens in it or antibacterials in it. And there are other things that I think that should have in a small amount. My products are made in Italy, which has much higher standards than the United States does ha have on ingredients. But then again, there are organics that use high amounts of highly inflammatory um, essential oils. So I don't, like when my babies were little, I wouldn't put lavender oil in their bathtub because lavender in a high amount can be irritating to uh, sensitive skin. So yes, is it organic? Yes, but should it be in water with sensitive skin? Maybe not. So there are things like that. All I wanna do is inform you and then you can make your own decision on what you want to do. I don't bash anybody for doing anything. All I want to do is inform you and then you can either buy my products or not buy my products or um, have, a, have an actual conversation with me about what you think and why you think that because I'm always open to learning something new. Anyway, I love you all. Thank you so much for um, watching my Instagram story. I think I'll leave it on for 24 hours because I wasn't a dork, but it was super long, so I apologize. Have a great day. Bye.